everybody, welcome back. Free Art Friday. Um, let me go ahead and silence that because that will be annoying. Okay, I'm gonna post the event link as soon as I can find it. Hope everyone's doing well. Sorry if you can hear everything outside my window. It is very loud. Going to video is sorry, just trying to get all of the um, events updated so that everyone can find this easily. Delete it here. Okay. There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my class. We're going to be doing mandalas today. Um, first, I'd like to thank my sponsors, um, Elizabeth. Marilyn, and as always, my mother. Donation links are in the description in case you'd also like to become a sponsor to keep this class going. As always, feel free to submit your questions in the comments. I am watching on my laptop so that I can see everybody's posts. Um, and today is probably going to take a little bit longer than normal. Not time-wise, but getting three rocks, so we may only get to two rocks, because what we're going to be doing is more time intensive. But last week we focused on dots, and this is sort of dots part two, and these were some of the examples, and I love seeing that people have been doing the rocks, thank you for posting them, I really enjoy seeing that, and today we're going to be doing mandalas which I have a few examples of different types of mandalas. I don't know if you can, how well you can see some of these. And then there's these examples. And then different types like these. So you can make these as complicated or as simple as you really want. Um, but first things first, we're going to talk about techniques. So I'm going to get paint out, because I have a lot of it, and I just use these simple little paints, sometimes I use nicer acrylics and stuff like that, um, I just find these easier to cart around with me than taking tubes everywhere, um, okay, so I'm going to teach you how to do this with a bright color so it's really obvious. Alright, so I'm going to dip my brush, and there's a dot, and you can do things like dip the end of a brush, a different brush, there's another dot, whoop, problem with these little things, so there's a dot, different dots. Now, our next one is string, and I totally just smushed this, which means it's going to go everywhere. This may not have been the smartest idea to use. Okay, so a string is when you take a big and go small. Um, you can use different brushes to achieve this look depending on how big your big is and how small you want to go. Because you can get them pretty small. So, here's two different variations of string. It's 
so see we have our biggest and then we go small. You can go in the opposite direction. You can combine them to make leaf patterns, which we have kind of done before on this rock. Um, but it just, it's kind of helpful to have an idea of how to do string. The next one we're going to do is swipe. And I'm going to take a dot like that. And I'm just going to bring it out. And you can do small swipes or big swipes. So see, small swipe, big swipe. Swipes are really useful when you're doing um, lines around your circles. And then the final one is called, gr I call it growth. I don't know what these actual terms are, but I'm calling them these, these things because they make the most sense to me. Growth takes your swipe and kind of amplifies it. So you just do a couple swipes and then at the top you do a downward swipe. So it looks sort of like a leaf. Pretty, right? And then you can do wide as well. There's all sorts of different growths. See a different version of growth. So now that you've seen the basics, we're going to start doing our rocks. So I've already base paint, base coated a couple of them, um, but I'm going to pull out some more rocks because I apparently forgot to bring in the one thing I needed. Go me. It's one of those days already. Yes, I keep mine in an egg carton. Makes for much easier transportation. Also, one of the artists I follow had a suggestion that I really liked. And it was, if you have rocks that have too many divots on them that are not smooth, you can take spackling and you can rub it in and then sandpaper your rocks and they'll be completely smooth which is really great for mandalas because as you're dealing with tiny dots any divot can change the way your art looks so we're gonna do some base colors and i'm gonna do light and darks so you can see the difference between the two when you decide to paint them if you are not painting them right now or if you are following along you can do whichever color you want it's up to you. So we're just going to take a color, just really quickly, get a nice little layer going. We'll probably double layer just to make sure it's on there well and fully coated. I'm going to move quickly, but at the same time it's going to seem like I'm moving really slowly while doing these, um, just because they are time intensive. Can you see that? Yes, we can see that. Okay, cool. And that didn't work. Oh, cool, I got blue on this, so I guess this one wants to be blue. Sometimes your rocks just know better than you do what they want to do. So, I'll just make that one blue. Really fast. And all I'm doing over here is wetting my um, brush and then rubbing it off to get all the excess water because especially with dealing with such small things any extra water can ruin design but you can fix any anything you think is ruined just by going back over with other paint it's really easy um, one of the things I suggest if you're going to make a habit of doing mandala rocks is get a piece of paper or cardboard or something to put under it so you don't end up doing what I just did, which is creating a huge mess on your hands. Um, 
which I've done many a time. So, you know, food for thought. Okay, so I'm going to start with one of my dark rocks while we wait for those to dry. And I have found that when I follow along with like a Pinterest or, or something that my rocks don't end up looking as good as the rocks that I just freehand. Um, not to say that they aren't good practice either way. This is probably my weakest uh, subject of all the ones I've taught so far. I am still learning how to use, do mandalas fully, but I thought I'd share with you what road humps I've had to get over and like how do I learn to handle certain things when I have them happen. So you can take your pencil and do some lines across. If you're not very good at writing lines, I suggest a ruler or tape, something straight edge, even a piece of paper that you can just go across. Um, I know some people do just T's. You don't have to do really any specific Thing, just sort of make sure they kind of line up in the middle. Like I'm doing a six. You can do whatever you want. Six is just what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see, is this too big? Yeah, that one's too big. I have little slouncers for my center if I want to use them. I may not even use those. I need this. this one. Okay, so I'm going to take a white and do my center. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm personally just doing the rainbow because I find they're easy to remember what colors go where. This is a horrible white. Okay. <laughs> I need to remember to buy more. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, I just did single dot. Very easy. See how I traced out six lines? Just to kind of give myself some direction on where I'm heading on this. And then, I'm going to take... A small brush. I have very tiny detail brushes. And I actually got this one off of like a little paint, stained glass paint kit. Like you can find in kids sections. So you can find brushes pretty much anywhere. I also have some that are nail art brushes. I have all sorts. Now I'm going to do this in white, but I'm going to go back over it in color. I'm just doing this at the moment to lay kind of the foundation of the colors that I'm going to use so that they really pop because I'm using such a dark background I don't want them to get lost. So I'm just going around and everywhere there's a line I'm putting it up in that first level. Interestingly enough, mandala in Sanskrit means circle. Okay, so. Now, one of the things you'll notice, I don't know if you can see them. See how they kind of dimple up? If you leave those dimples, you will have a very texturized piece. I have that with this piece that I did. It's it's very rough feeling. Um, now once I've sealed it multiple times, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but as it stands right now, it's kind of textured, which I don't mind. It kind of is a cool little thing. Okay, so now we're just going to go and do in the middle, 
right here, we're going to make a bigger circle in between the lines now and in between our dots going out. They don't have to be perfect. My kind of mantra is that none of these have to be perfect. To me, this is just for fun, so I don't... I don't see a reason to have to let my OCD take over when I'm doing these. And we're just going to continue making slightly bigger circles, going back and forth between being in the center of two dots and then being on the line. So in some spiritual traditions, mandalas are employed for focusing attention spiritual guidance tools, establishing sacred spaces, and as an aid in meditation. In fact, you can observe mandalas in almost every culture, every single cultural culture and faith throughout history. Some of those examples would be like the rose windows in Christianity, like you can see on Notre Dame. Um, the Aztec sunstones are mandalas. Um, sand paintings done by Native Americans, they're all mandalas. And even the Celtic crosses, which interestingly enough, they think predates Christianity and are actually from the Druids. Fascinating little stories. But the oldest known mandala actually dates back to the first century BCE, where Buddhist monks used them for meditation. Those mandalas, however, were called Kiyokor, which refers to the center of all creation. Later on, of course, they would spread throughout different countries, starting in Asia, and were pretty prominent in Asia by the 4th century. Okay, so see how I'm doing? I'm just continuing to go on. And guess what we're going to do? The exact same thing that we just did. And, and bigger dots in the middle. This is a very simple design that I'm doing right now. I don't want to start you out with doing anything too complicated. This is pretty much the first one I learned how to do where I didn't feel like I was messing it up constantly. Because my first mandala was uh, not cute. But it did glow in the dark, so maybe there's something there. One of the reasons I love using acrylic paint for this is if I mess up, I can always wipe it off. It's very handy. Okay, so see? We're just gonna keep going. Actually, I think, I think I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna stop there for now. And I will show you why later. Okay, so now we're going to start a different one that is going to be slightly different than that. 
Um, oh, please say I have enough yellow for this glass. Is that how big I want it? No, it's a little smaller. Okay, so again, I'm going to take the end of a brush, dip it, hopefully, in enough paint. Find sort of the center. And make a dot. And then I'm going to come in here with my tiny one. And I'm going to make a row of dots. Just going around. Where was I? All right. And then I'm going to change colors to a slightly darker color. I'm going to use kind of an orange color. You can use whatever colors you want, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm going to do that same technique where we find the window between two dots and make a slightly bigger dot. Now it looks like this. I hope you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to make slightly bigger dots again. I think I have to sneeze. <laughs> I'm going to try not to, but I think I have to. And I'm going to use slightly darker orange again and I'm going to make slightly bigger dots in the windows again So now it should look like this. I don't know how well you can see any of this. I hope you can kind of see it well. Alright, so I'm going to wipe off my orange paint because we're going to do some completely other colors. Now, remember how I said we were going to use techniques? Guess what we're about to do. So I'm going to grab any color. That is not my orange palette. Um, for me, that color is going to be this really pretty deep blue. I really like this blue. I really need to get more of this color. I mean, it just dries so pretty. Look at that. Like, it's so brilliant. Alright, so I'm going to take it. Take a little bit of color on my brush. And starting kind of right here, I'm going to do a growth. And then you copy it on the other side. So you have little lines kind of going down. And right now I'm just going to do a 
the two line graph. So I don't know if you can see how well you can. Woo! That would have been bad. How well you can see that. It's pretty dark blue. Um, but I just did two lines. One this way, one this way, and then one up. So it's a short growth. My brush is trying to become oblong. That will not help me do dots. And it's okay if you mess this part up. Lord knows I have so many times. Once it's a part of a full design, it'll be very hard to tell that it's a mess up. <sighs> I can hear my cat. I'm really hoping she doesn't try and cut across on the table. But we shall see. The hardest part is making sure you're staying straight outward instead of kind of curving because you just start automatically curving instead of going straight. I don't know if you can see this. Once it dries it'll look really cute. That is way too much paint right there, but whatever. I'll go back and fix it. And then the next one's perfect. Practically perfect, of course. Ooh, that's way too much paint. Careful on how much paint you grab. It's really easy in this part to go too big. Okay, so now we have those all the way around, those little growths. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with a light blue. And right above where I've put my orange dots, those biggest orange dots, I'm going to put a tiny blue dot in a lighter color. So now it should look like this. I can sell them. Um, I actually have someone in my neighborhood who is purchasing some for her mother who is in a retirement community for Mother's Day. Um, I don't really like talking about like pricing and everything because I like to work off people's budgets instead of having a set price because um, especially during these difficult times, you know, money's kind of tight, and I get that. So, private message me if you're interested, and I will work with you. Um, okay, so we have this so far. Now, I'm sort of deciding this on the fly, so I'm sort of trying to figure out what exactly I want to do. We're going to, I'm going to take that same blue and I'm going to do that with the 
um, swipe technique. I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that. What I did is I put one under and one over using the ball part at the bottom near where the innermost growth leaves are. If that made sense. I hope that made sense. And I'm just going to go around and do that for each one. And I messed up, which is okay. I'm going to just come in here and fix that really fast. So like I said, really easy to fix while you're doing these. Just wet your cloth a little. Just be careful not to hit any of the other part of your design. And then just move to the other side and let that side dry. Now one of the things you can do to sort of stop yourself from messing up, like I just did, and I've had to learn this, and obviously I still haven't quite learned it, is you go in and do one direction first. So that you're not confusing yourself, if that makes sense. So I'm only doing the one direction at the moment. And then I'll go back and do the other direction. So now I've done all one direction, and now I'm going to go and do the other direction. And they don't have to be perfectly matching. We're not looking for twins, we're looking for sisters. Just have to look sort of like each other. And last one. Alright, so now we've done this. I should be careful about touching my, my face. Especially with paint all over my hands. I'm gonna end up with like a blue face, you know, like I just have to deal with it. Cause I'm not gonna notice, I promise. Okay, um, now I'm gonna go for an even lighter blue. So let's move that in here. Actually, first I'm gonna go ahead and add this second layer on this one. So that it has time to, that has time to dry. Cause I don't wanna mess with it too much. So we're just gonna go back through quickly adding all of this. Oof. I swear, time flies when I'm doing this. I mean, I spend all of my morning pretty much outside because it's been so nice. Just sitting outside doing rocks. Plus the sun really helps to dry my rocks, which is a nice, helpful thing. So I don't have to worry about having to sit and wait like I do in here. I thought about having class outside, but too many variables I didn't like. Okay, back to this one. So I'm going to take this lighter blue. I'm 
and right at the top of the groove I'm going to do a dot with two dots next to it so it's sort of like a little happy face kind of thing well, a shocked face I guess so a big dot and little dots. Big dot. Little dots. There are all sorts of mandala artists. There's some really great ones on Pinterest that I follow that are just phenomenal. Like, I look at their stuff and even I'm like, uh, I don't think I'm ever going to get that good at this. But I think everything is just a matter of practicing. You know, I wasn't always good at art. Um, I look back at some of my middle school of drawings and I'm like why did I keep this? Why did I show people this like I was proud of it? Or so. So see how we're doing? Just cute little things. Alright, so now I'm gonna do what am I gonna do? Make these slightly bigger because I don't like how small they are. So there, there. Oh, missed one. I just made those a little bigger so you could see them a little better. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a slightly smaller light blue dot right above all of those light dots. So that it looks like that. See how I just added an extra dot? Now I'm going to do a string, or at least attempt a string. I said, I'm not very good at this. And I've messed up a few times, and that's okay. Like I said, these are ones I just sort of do for fun. I don't really expect them to be super perfect.
later. So now we have something that looks like this. Oh, it took me quite some time. Um, the first mandala I did was over two years ago. Yeah. Or about two years ago, I guess. Roughly two years ago. Um, and like I said, it was horrible. I don't even have a picture of it. That's how bad it was. Um, so yeah. Not all of them are going to be gems, and that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to kind of a light green, I guess. You know, I think I'm going to stay in the blue for a minute. I'm just going to go back. Kind of an icy. Hopefully this isn't too green. And right above where the lines are doing this, I'm going to put a dot. A really big dot. Now, you can just use a dotting tool here. I, for some reason, am doing this with a brush. I should just use a dotting tool, but... Oh well, it's already started. I'm not going to stop now. But I think the other thing is that I've been doing art since I was about three. So... And that's true. That they are not all gems, but you never know what's going to make someone else smile because art is in the eye of the beholder. And what is beautiful to one person is not necessarily beautiful to another. And that's okay. In fact, interestingly enough, Carl Jung said that a mandala is the psychological expression of the totality of the self. Um, being that circles themselves are one of the most preferred shapes. I mean, even babies have a fondness for these things. Um, I'm a design major, so I had to learn a bunch about shapes and colors. Um, according to Madri J. Horowitz, who's a professor of psychiatry at the University of California in San Francisco, circles are registered by the eye and processed directly to the visual cortex without any intermediate processing. And this is because circles are mirrors of themselves. And Carl Jung said that mandalas can also mirror our psychological state. In fact, he got into the habit of doing little mandalas every morning. And he realized that he could tell how his psychological state was due to how his mandalas looked. Okay, so now we've done, some of these are much bigger than others, hold on. Let me fix that real fast. There we go. See how I'm doing? And I think the other thing is mandalas, you get in your head about a mandala. Like, you expect it, it needs to look a certain way. But it doesn't really. Because when you think about how many different types of mandalas there are, I mean, the Hindu mandalas are actually like squares, but they come from a center circle point. So as long as you've got that center circle point, and it can be negative space too, it doesn't have to be a true circle. As long as you've got that, you've made a mandala. And that's the important part, right? Okay, so from here... I'm going to try and figure out what I'm going to do. Yep, nope, that's not it. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> hmm. 
You want to be careful when you're rubbing off the paint if you mess up to uh, not rub off your base coat, which I've done before. I'm going to do a reverse growth. With two different colors. I'm getting fancy in here. So starting... Right next to our big dots. We're going to do two lines, I don't know how well you can see this, coming down. Remember what I said about doing one direction first? Let's do that so we don't mess up the directions. We're just going to that tip of that string that we combined to make kind of a petal. But we're not touching it, we're just going right above it. So see how I have all one direction? Now I'm going to go back and do the other direction. And turning your brush as you slide so that it's the narrower side of the brush will help. Okay, so I guess right now what I'm just going to do is two slides, which are sort of a growth, but they're not really a growth, I guess. Like I said, I don't really know what to call some of these things. Okay, so now we have those going around. And I'm going to take like darker green and look at my cheat sheets I'm trying to remember how I did it oh, of course they're stuck together yay how cool I don't know okay so I'm just going to Make one of those wide growths. So we start like this. So it looks like antenna. And we're just going to do that for each and every one of them. Make a little antenna.
but I don't really have a set place I'm putting the uh, beginner dot. I'm just sort of feeling it and hoping it goes well. Kind of going off where the uh, inner line kind of ends, I guess. Okay, so now I have this dark green line. And I'm just going to do three little lines going into the grass. I think the things that most helped me, however, doing all these techniques is, besides obvious practice, um, is that I actually also know how to do face painting. And I was taught how to do face painting by a professional face painter um, while I was at Texas Choir Camp. They have such interesting classes. Sad that it got canceled due to the coronavirus, but it's probably for the best. Wouldn't want anyone getting sick. Especially while you're supposed to be having fun at camp. That's not fun. So now we've done our rock. And if you feel there's too many empty spaces, which I kind of feel there's a few too many empty spaces, you can go in like I'm about to do and add dots. Say the wrong dot. You can also do that technique we did from last week where you can put color on top of color. Alright, so there we go. And that's done. That's all there is to it. I promise they look harder than they are. Now I will say the techniques take time to learn. So don't assume you're just going to know it instantly. It will take time. Okay, so now I'm going to do a lighter, Woo! I'm going to drop my rock. <sighs> I'm going to do a lighter colored rock so you can see sort of how to do one of those as well. Um, I'm going to choose a color to do, I think I'm going to start with brown because I kind of like brown. 
And I think it's underutilized. Gotta get my hair off of that. Kind of find the center and make. So, then I'm going to take my brush, and I'm going to take the brown, And then I'm going to take a bright color. Let's go with... Purple. I'm going to go with purple. Because I like the idea of purple. And brown. I think they're pretty together. I'm going to take my lightest purple. And I'm just going to put every other dot in that color. Okay. So. right above the brown. I'm going to make another brown. Making it slightly bigger. And I'm going to take a slightly darker purple. And I'm going to do the same thing that I just did with the brown. So see? And now I'm going to take a slightly lighter brown. And make a slightly bigger line. Or not line, dot. <laughs> I messed up the purple. Shoot. Purple needed to be in the window. That one's in the window. Not the right one, but it'll work. In this next one. Okay, so I'm going to take a slightly darker purple. Oh, hopefully, this one's not too watery. And I'm not going to make my dot any bigger on this one. But it's darker. And because of that, it looks bigger because. Saturation and hue both have weight. Um, design tricks. Oh, and we've already run out of time. <laughs> so, I guess next week we're doing Dots Part 3, which will be Mandala's Part 2. Um, 
So I hope to see what you manage to get done. I will leave that like that, and we will pick up right where we left off next week. Same time, same place. 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hope to see you soon. Bye!